Welcome to the Modernizer Die Podcast, CFML News Edition, where we keep you up to date with everything going on in the Cold Fusion community. We'll share the latest news on events, releases to engines, frameworks, libraries, and tools, as well as spotlighting quality content from the community. Thanks everybody for coming and listening and watching on YouTube. Uh, my name is Gavin Pickin. I'm a software consultant for Auto Solutions. And, and my name is Andrew Davis, Senior Developer for Enly. Yeah. So thanks everyone for watching uh, and listening if you're on your podcast. So the big news for us this week anyway is that the CFML News Podcast is now live and available everywhere. So we got a full write-up on the Autos blog, so you can go check it out. But uh, when I mean everywhere, I do actually mean everywhere, right, Andrew? Yeah, literally. Uh, you can grab an RSS feed. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher, Spotify, my favorite, Pocket Cast, Castro, Radio Public, and TuneIn, as well as where you're watching right now on YouTube and anywhere else. Yep, we have the cfmlnews.modernizerdie.io website up. Uh, you can find all those links there, and as we get approved for new ones, we'll add those to the site too. You can see the episodes, you can list it right on the website, or you can subscribe like Andrew mm -hmm. said. So it's now out there. Um, so. so there's absolutely no excuse not to watch except for the fact that you don't like us. Yeah, and we can't <laughs> hold that against you. But anyway, um, so a lot of people have been asking about the Soapbox podcast, so we're in the middle of editing right now. Uh, the plan is by end of the month, we're going to release the first three or four episodes. So uh, basically, you'll be up to date with all the episodes. So when we release them, you'll get all of them at once. And then we'll, from then, we'll be on a weekly schedule. So um, keep an eye out for that. We should be releasing that, like I said, in the next week or two. So obviously, we'll announce it here, but um, keep an eye yep. out. Stay tuned here for the news about the Soapbox. So what's going on, uh, Gavin, this week? What well, we this week, um, head hunter Luis Mahano is actually in, the, in some traveling. He's down in uh, Malaga, Spain, because uh, Auto Solutions is again sponsoring the Open South Code. So there's a, a conference down there. And it looks like he's going to be busy for the next couple of days. Yeah, he's um, actually doing a, a cold box workshop um, as well as a presentation on the intro to HMVC with cold box and uh jorge is manning the booth down there so yep um, so if anyone down in malaga spain want to go harass them you can uh and again we're autos is evangelizing europe we're trying to get the word out there about cold fusion and so good luck down there and uh, um we'll get a full report from luis on that later yep that'll be something probably for the uh soapbox i'm assuming Yep. Uh, next up, we have uh, Adobe and their screencasts. They've been doing some screencasts now for a while. And uh, tomorrow, um, they are doing one on called Cut Root Cause Analysis Time Down from Days to Minutes Using Fusion Reactor. So um, David is going to be talking with them and giving the, the ins and outs of Fusion Reactor. And uh, I encourage you to check it out tomorrow if you have time. Yep, and uh, I didn't know, but they've actually been doing a lot of these lately. So if you go to the, the Meetup page, we have linked in the show notes, uh, meetup.adobeevents.com slash coldfusion. You can actually change it where it says um, the Meetup type from recording, uh, sorry, from webinar. If you choose recording, it'll show all the old episodes too. But uh, next week we have another one, and I think there's even one more in June. So next week, Pete is talking about Fixinator. Uh, so Pete Freitag, friend of the show, um, He's going to be talking about Fixinator, which we announced it into the box, and uh, that's a cool product. And then after that, George Murphy is actually talking about Code Checker. Yeah. Now, Gavin, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't you work on the Code Checker product? Yep. We I know actually, it was adapted from something different, but that was part of your baby too, wasn't it? Yep. Uh, there was an old version up, uh, open source version, and we forked it, and we added some cold box flare to it and everything else. And now Brad has actually made a command box module for it too. So you can have JSON files for configuration and mm -hmm. rules and everything, and then you can run it from the command line in your CI build. It'll actually run against all these rules, you know, vast scoping and, and all these basically whatever you want because it's customizable and then yeah you can run it in your ci so george murphy's gonna be talking about that through that adobe webinar so um, yep that'll be june 5th so uh put that on your calendar and check that out as well now i hear you are going to get to do some of the adobe road shows we know they had one in austin i believe last week or so and they got one coming up near you and you're going to get to attend yep i'm going to be jumping in um 
on Thursday, I'm going to drive down to Costa Mesa. So I'll be getting up bright and early and uh, driving down there. So I get to meet the uh, Adobe team and listen to some of the, the information they're releasing about the Call of Duty 2018. Uh, it's really good. Last time I went down there, I met a lot of people I hadn't ever seen before. Um, so at CF Summit, you meet a lot of new people that don't come to a lot of conferences. But these road shows, you know, you get a lot of people that... Uh, never been to a conference before uh that they haven't been to user groups or, and whatnot and so it's really nice to, to meet new people and find out what they're doing and we ran some cool stuff last time i actually talked to someone um who was working with i think it was i'm trying to remember the name of it now tmz i believe and so they're they're around cold fusion based stuff and all their tmz news updates and everything which is kind of interesting so nice so we get to enjoy or join the smut crowd Excellent. I love it. Uh, speaking of CF Summit, uh, it's coming up October 1st through 2nd, and this month is the end of the early bird registration for only 99 bucks. So I encourage everyone to go out and register. Actually, I need to register today myself. Um, I'm telling you guys to register, and I haven't even done it yet. So I'm gonna, as soon as I get done, I'm registering, and uh, hope to see you out all there. Yep, and uh, if you are thinking about speaking, the call for speakers is now open, but it's closing on the 26th of May, so I better get my sessions um, submitted there as well. Ooh. But um, yeah, remember if you do buy an early bird ticket and your session does get picked, you can get a refund on that or transfer it. So don't be afraid if you think you're going to get uh, chosen or you're not sure. Just buy an early bird ticket, submit your sessions, and go from there. And then they also have the specialty program for the workshop the day before so um if you guys are wanting to do that the price i believe is going up on that at the end of this month as well so uh, if you want to do, do you the know workshop, what that workshop is about um basically it's your cold fusion certification program so you certify that you know cold fusion uh, adobe is putting this on uh, it's a proper adobe um, certification so you'll cover all the basics of cold fusion and I think the way it works is you'll you register, they'll send you some materials, you'll work through a lot of it on your own and everything, and on the last day, you go to the workshop, you finish up, you do like a little evaluation, uh, and, and then basically at the end of it, you should come walk away with a certification. So Excellent. Yeah, and you know some company certifications mean a lot of things, and so now Alcohol Fusion is again offering this certification. So that's good. Uh, make sure you, again, don't miss on the early bird if you're thinking about it, jump on it. Um, yeah, it's three ninety nine on the early bird. Uh, no clue what it's going to go to up after that. Yep. Um, but if you think you're going to do it, jump on it. Uh, go ahead and seal the deal. Get the plane tickets. Yep. And, and uh, we'll see you in Vegas. Yep, that's the day before. Um, so, again, that's the 30th, Monday the 30th. And the conference itself, I believe, is the October 1st and 2nd, which is Tuesday, Wednesday. Order Solutions is uh, going to be running a two-day workshop Thursday, Friday. So that's what we're planning on doing like we did last year. We had about 20 people come to our workshop last year. We had a great turnout. And so we're, we're planning to do the same two-day workshop um, time frame. We're still deciding on which workshop we want. So if you guys have a workshop you'd prefer to take, Coldbox Zero to Here is really popular at CF Summit, but if there's something else you want, let us know. We're deciding that. So, But just, just so you know, don't book your tickets just yet. Make sure you save those two days after the conference for an oldest training. And I'll be there. Brad will be there. Luis will be there. I think we're even having Eric Peterson. We're going to have a big crew, so we can get a nice big workshop and you know have a lot of Ordis people helping you out there. A lot of Ordis help. That's that's definitely good. It's always good to be able to get you guys and, and, and grab you by the neck every once, I mean, by the hand every once in a while, excuse me, and uh, and, and get some information. So I encourage you guys all to come. Um, you really do get some some one-on-one -on -one attention, uh, these boot camps and trainings. And uh, if you feel like you get left behind, uh, you know, don't don't hesitate to, to raise your hand and, and ask for questions or anything like that. Um, I've sat in on them myself, and I've also helped uh, work in them. And I mean, that's how we all learn. We all learn from mistakes. Yes, Eric, I probably will. Somebody will probably grab. Oh, I know where you're going with this. Yes, I will grab myself by the throat. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Eric. And then the other thing about the workshops too is, you know, we're we're a friendly bunch, and you know, at lunch after after the workshops over, we usually go to dinner with the group too if they if they want to go, and you know, we, we can chit chat about different things, and you know, make sure you guys are following, keeping up, and, and everything. So, uh, it's really good. And speaking about the Cold Box Zero to Hero workshop, um, Luis Mahano is actually doing one in Bangalore, India. So he's going to be out there October 16th and 17th this year. Uh, he has prices for individuals. Also for groups though so if you 
guys want to save a little bit get a group together and group discounts are available so uh, i like this one me and erica helped write this and so we made it where we're basically creating a, a clone of twitter and it's called soapbox so <laughs> instead of getting up and t tweeting about stuff you're going to rant and rave on your soapbox about different things so it's a lot of fun um you know everyone understands what twitter is hopefully and so you're not worrying about learning new concepts as well as trying to understand the app so it's pretty nice you learn about a lot of different modules and a lot of different things and it really is a zero to hero class so um that'll be good but uh also at the same time something's going on in germany right yeah cf camp uh, October 17th and 18th in Munich, Germany. And right now, if you are even thinking about speaking, uh, the deadline is July 7th to get your topic submitted, send it over to them. Uh, they love new speakers and are interested in what you have to say. So get them out there. Yep. Uh, Kaiko and Eggs on Twitter all the time, reminding everybody about that. So uh, get some get some submissions in there. Just don't go Nolan or Econom and send 20 because you'll get banned. Yeah, we, we gave Nolan a hard time last time, and I believe he, he is actually banned uh, from submitting any more topics this year. Um, so, yep. next up, we have the blogs, tweets, and videos of the week. And boy, do we have some blogs for you now. Yep. So, yeah, so uh, Pete started off with uh, a couple of tweets. Um, so, he's been tweeting a little bit. But um, one of the ones that stood out to me was, he said, if you're a Cold Fusion developer, make sure you're following Michael Bourne. He's been putting out a lot of good content lately, and, and that's so true. Um, yeah, so Michael's been busy uh, tweeting a lot of stuff, uh, blogging a lot of stuff, and it looks like he's writing a CI guide for Cold Fusion and Bitbucket Pipelines. Uh, yep, and it's uh, available. He's got uh, 21 subscribers right now. And I mean, quite honestly, um, that's kudos, because for your first, um you know, newsletter, that, that's pretty good. But everybody, I encourage to go sign up, follow him, um, see what he has. Uh, it's a lot of uh, really good content. And actually, one of his blog posts uh, is, yes, CF is unpopular. No, I don't care. Yep. And um, it was kind of funny. Gavin and I, we were looking at it earlier. And we saw this uh, little, what do you call those things? Code strips. So we're gonna we're gonna play something out here for you, and you're gonna get a kick out of this. Is Gavin? I've got great news. I found the perfect job, but it doesn't even fit my profile at all. Wait, wait. Look, they're using JavaScript. You're a Java expert. Uh, it's exactly the same thing. I promise you. You said you use MySQL, and here they use NoSQL. It's basically the same thing. And I remember you said you're happy to learn new languages, right? Uh, yeah. Perfect. The company is offering to train you in cold fusion. Awesome, right? <laughs> so that was kind of the premise of uh, the, the blog strip. Yeah, commit strip, sorry, Gavin or Brad. And um, it kind of goes into the fact that, um, you know, everybody had goes through their ups and downs of popularity of, of languages and all. And, um, you know, the even Ruby now, kinda... even Ruby's getting crap about being dead, so. You know, they all yeah, I heard it the other day on PHP. Uh, of course, that's been a long time coming, and uh, I kind of just sit back and smirk. I don't throw fame or fuel to their fire because they threw it so bad at us. It's just kind of one of those sit back and smirk and watch the cars lay where they may. But um, you know, this community's come together. There's there's no reason in the world for us to even think that you know CF is dead. It's um, you know, it's my opinion that we now know to you know. Put your boots on, pull up your pants, and get to work and prove to everyone um, uh, with modules and things like that um, that Cold Fusion is definitely not dead. So yep, it's still alive, it's still useful, that. and that's that's what Michael's trying to say in that blog post. Is yep. you know what, it might not be popular, but it doesn't matter because it's still a useful tool, and that's something we're using. So yep, and then uh, Pete right. Freitag also. Um, um, released another version of his newsletter. So he actually has a CFML newsletter himself. Uh, it gets released on tinyletter.com, which is a MailChimp service. But uh, every month he releases a, a CFML news, uh, basically a letter. And he's got 30 issues already. So if you guys want to check that out, go back and look at some of the back episodes, sign up and get new ones. But it's actually part of the reason why we thought about doing this. He releases it monthly and we're like, there's so much going on. We need to keep up on this. And you know, weekly is why we're, we're doing the CFML week. Yep, absolutely. And uh, 
McCullough Light uh, from CF Alive interviewed uh, Rex Sheet and uh, about the vision of cold fusion over the next 10 years. Uh, so I guess he caught up with them at CF Summit, uh, recorded a podcast interview, and we're going to have the link to that in the show notes. Uh, so be sure to, to check that out as well. Yeah, but um, the, the uh, yeah the blog post has all the information, but there's also a link to go see the 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 video podcast and I'll listen to the the audio version as well. So really useful there. And right, and Michaela is also the one that uh, you know, with TerraTech it, it does the State of the Union, and uh, those results are in now the 2019 State of the U- Union for Cold Fusion. Um, once again, the show notes are, are going to have the link to that, and I encourage you to check that out. And- yeah, there's an amazing amount of, amount of categories. There's like, you know, ask you about what engine you're using, what, you know, do you go to user groups or conferences, what features do you use the most, do you use frameworks, do you use testing, do you use CI, you know, are you using monitoring tools, you know, there's 45 different categories of questions there. So it's got a lot of information, nice little bar graphs and everything so you can compare the stats, but it's really interesting. And uh, we use it a lot to, to base our decisions here at Audis. So uh, I highly recommend you check that out, even if you're just curious. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm kind of curious. I'm looking right here. I want to see how many people actually claim that they are testing. We have been- <laughs> they're lying. <laughs> they're lying. No, 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 they're not. Nobody. Yeah, we're, here we are. Uh, the majority of the people said that they use no testing. Um, I just have to check and see. That's kind of an inside joke as well. Uh, testing is very important, very critical to, to do. And especially as you have continuous integration, uh, testing is, yeah, it's key. It's hard to do. I'm not going to lie, but you got to yeah. do it. And so, uh, so next we have, um, my friend Brian class, uh, he's pumping out more amazing AWS content. So he's released the 12th blog post in the series. I can't believe he's done tw- uh, eight on this or sorry. Did I say 12? I mean, eight eight on this already um so he's looking at aws step functions in cold fusion uh step functions are pretty cool if you haven't seen them they work really well and uh brian uses aws a lot with cold fusion and you know using the right tool for the job so he uses cold fusion to control a lot of it but aws powers a lot of cool things they're doing over there and um so his talks are amazing he's a great speaker and a great writer and so you guys need to check out his blog post but also his series just his blog in general so the link is there in the show notes for that as well yeah and it's it's really cool i mean you said oh wow is it that's already his eighth post on this but you know everyone who knows aws is um kind of a big beast to tackle and understand so brian i, I appreciate you breaking it down um you know uh us cfml developers we kind of think a little bit differently from everybody else um, that's just kind of how we <laughs> we just do you know and so it's uh, it's good to get uh perspective from somebody who understands how we think and um I'm I'm excited to go in there and, and check them out myself. Um, yep. I apologize, I haven't already. I know that sounds bad coming from here, but uh, it's be. hard to keep up. It is, and that's why we're here. We're letting you know, hey, it, the information is there. So, and yep. it's new. Yep. So next, we're going to look at the ForgeBox module of the week. So this week, uh, this is one I submitted, but I think everybody uh, in the Audis team is using it. I know you've used it before, Andrew, as well. So we're going to be talking about commandbox.env. So it's just a simple little command box module. But what it does is it basically takes a .env file in your app and loads those variables into Java properties um, and environment variables. So basically, when you're using something locally, you have your own .env file that's not committed to your repo. And so when I when you download and clone that repo and you put your own settings in for the .env, all the database and everything works because it's using your environment settings. And when on mine, use my environment settings. So it's a simple little tool, but um, let me just show you a link here. It's very powerful and very crucial. Yep, and then so with that, the the VS Code module of the week is the .env extension. So this actually allows you to work with a .env file and give it syntax highlighting. So this just made sense to, to group these together. So uh, the syntax highlighting just makes it easier for looking at the different variables. Mm-hmm. And this is what your .env will look like. You got a variable and it's just, you know, equals and quote signs, but you can also do, you know, uh, environment variables and, and everything else in there too. And this, this VS Code module just makes it a little easier to work with. Um, but Again, uh, the .env yeah. module on ForgeBox and then the VS Code extension. Yeah, um, and you may think that the, the VS Code extension is like, oh, that's not really a great tip, but for anyone who has converted from YAML to .env and has gotten things crossed, do I use equals or do I use colons? 
the .env extension is really going to uh, to save your sanity. Um, it's it's a very minor thing, but it will save your sanity. Yep, and it's really nice. Um, it works pretty nice. You know, the error catching is is useful. But again, Visual Code, uh, Visual Studio Code. There's lots of cool extensions, and some of them are tiny, but they're still really useful. So again, that's why we share a new one every week. So yep. with that being that, said, uh, I think we're it for this week. So now we just got to mispronounce all our Patreon supporters. Yeah, that brings us to the uh, the Patreon supporters. So the Patreon supporters uh, goes that money goes to help you know tooling like Command Box, Forward Box, Cold Box, and all that. Um, it's, it's you know allowing you to you know contribute uh, financially to the development of those packages and. Um, I actually encourage all of you guys to join me. I'm the first one on the list there. Join me. We have Gary Knight. Um, it's actually Jan Yannick. Jan. That's what I was going to ask. I knew Brad corrected me last time. We got Jan yep. Yannick, uh, Joseph uh, Lamore. Lamore. Sorry, dude. And Gavin, you did a good on his name last time. Laxma Tirahadi. Yep, sounds good. We have Richard Herbert, John Ferrar. I see you in the chat there, John. Yep, thank you, John. Uh, we have Carl von St uh, Stetten. For some reason, I thought it was Stetten, but it's Stetten. That's good. I learned to pronounce your Well, maybe not pronounce it, but I learned your name now. Yep, we have Don and Bellamy, Samuel Knowlton, David so Bellinger, Yogesh Mathur. Yep. And we have Stephen Klotz, Dan Card, He's Jeremy in the chat, Adams, too. Sorry. Brian White, and... Ooh. Yeah, Didia Lesnicki, I think. We do apologize. Yep. Um, but we, we thank are you. We're going to get recordings, <laughs> but we do thank you. Jan Yannick, Brad got it. Well, why don't you just thank yeah. you? Spell it to me like that. Y A W N Y A W N E K. That's how he gave it to me in the chat. So, yeah. So, we'll anyways. put it in our show notes for next year, but uh, or next week. But we do thank you guys. Yeah. So, everybody, if you just watched it, I know you really want to see more. So, you can go see more again on YouTube, but you can listen on the podcast as well. So, check out the cfmountainnews.modernizerdie.io for all the information. And, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you. This is for you, John. I'm waving back. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. See you next week. <laughs>